Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Mrs. Moore, you're just a whiz-bang, that's all. That's just what you are. <laughs> well, imagine that pottery vendor in Jamaica trying to pass off that jug on me as genuine native merchandise. Mr. Haven warned me to be careful, didn't you, Tommy? Sure I did. I've been to the Caribbees before. I know how these natives work. Well, we're glad you two waited till you came to Havana before you purchased any pottery. I've got a little item here you might be interested in. Slate, these people want to go to their rooms. Pretty late. Well, I only show it to you because you're guest at the hotel. Got it right here under the desk. Uh, how do you like it? Oh, it's very pretty. It's got a real interesting design on it, all right. Uh huh. Shape of the flying fingers of the Crawwinds. Crawwinds? A little known tribe of artisans, direct descendants of Lafitte the pirate, marooned on a small atoll some 60 leagues from here. Instead of dying, they made pots. See? Stamped right here, Crawwind. Crawwins, huh? With a pocket mirror in front of it, it would come out Newark, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yes, I guess it would. Well, if you'd like it that way, we also have here a little memento of your visit, a leather-back pocket mirror with a scene of colorful old Havana tooled into... Mr. Haven, Mrs. Moore, wouldn't you like to see your rooms now? They're right across the hall from each other. Well, I'd like to make a phone call first, if you don't mind. Uh, you'll be all right, Claudia? Oh, of course I will. I want to tell you again how kind you've been. Meeting me on the boat and taking me under your wing on this cruise. Well, you've been wonderful. Don't mention it. Milo. Hiya, Milo. Yeah, we're here. Mm-hmm. Both of us. No, not as far as I know. I think we lost him in Jamaica. Sure, I know you'll find us. So I thought of something. Why run anymore? What? That's going to be up to you, Milo. Kill him? Didn't you hear what I said? That's up to you. Come in. You've kept me waiting, Tommy. More and more you keep me waiting. You getting that tired feeling, Tommy? Because of me. How does a man get tired of a girl like you, Claudia? The things you do for a man. Steal your husband blind. Run barefoot across sunny shores with your true love. Just so as you can settle down on a vine-covered island off the coast of Venezuela. You and your true love. Me. It's all you want, isn't it? That island. A clod of coral in the Caribbean so you can wear a sarong and a tin crown that says king. A tin can crown. That's it, Angel. That's just it. The island, the crown, and you for a princess. Well, suppose Jean finds us, Tommy. Suppose before we make paradise, he finds us. Jean, the husband fellow, the boys chased us a long way to find his grave. I'll tell you what. We'll give him one. Mr. Shannon. Am I intruding, Mr. Shannon? Intruding on what? Oh, on your thoughts. The way you're standing here on the beach drinking in the new morning sunshine. Wondering what's out there, hmm? Out there in the ocean. I know what's out in the ocean. Fish. You were going where, Mr. Haven? I want to talk to you. Uh-huh. It's about me. Oh, well, Mr. Haven, I... 
I think you're a very fine fellow. Loyal, kind, brave, 100%. I think you'll go far. Is that what you wanted me to tell you? Take it easy, will you? Just listen for a minute. Yeah. All my life I've wanted something. I want a place to go. Oh, just don't laugh at me, that's all. An island. A place to live in without rush. Without... I, I've got one all picked out, Mr. Shannon. An island off Venezuela. I've done a lot of research on it. You can buy these hunks of land for a song from the Venezuelan now, government. You want me to sing for you? Now, you've got a boat. I want you to take me. When? Oh, I've got some things to take care of first. I'll let you know. But it'll be soon. It's a dream I've always had, Mr. Shannon. Well, I need a little time to put the bold venture in shape. Well, uh, 300 bucks for the trip, Haven, per person. I'm going alone. Oh. Well, just let me know. You bought yourself a boat ride. Uh, tell me, Mr. Wall, what does a bachelor girl do for thrills in Havana? Uh, tell me, just between us girls. Well, there are the peachy museums, for culture, that is. Because we bachelor girls are nowhere without culture. And there's the ice cream you buy from the vendors on the Prado. That tutti-frutti melts in your mouth. And you then You didn't get the message, dear. I meant Slate Shannon. Him? That no-good shill for crow and pots? Shannon, the pot tycoon? Him? The best part of the day's gone, and Shannon's not at your side. You happy in your work, bachelor girl? What's with you, married lady? Slate's down at the docks getting the bold venture ready for Mr. Haven's trip to Venezuela. Slate and I are going with him. You? You're going with him and not me? Among other things, girly, I have Slate's ear. I'll pour a word in for you if you... Uh, oh, uh, pardon me, Mrs. Moore. This gentleman here. A room, gentlemen, with bath, without bath, sunny, shady. State your case. Anything you got, miss? So long as it's got four walls. Well, it just so happens we've got one where we just added a wall. Rate's a little higher on that one. I'll take it, Bright Eyes. Room 3A, down that hall. Sign here. So you got a man registered here named of Haven. Tommy Haven. He around? No. He went out a little while ago. You want him? I want him. Know where he is, Bright Eyes? Try the docks, gentlemen. Mr. Haven's probably running his fingers over our boat, the Bold Venture, testing her for the trip to Venezuela. You, bright-lipped doll, you, I'm going to go to my room. Get my baggage in there. Maybe I'll want to change into something cool for a walk later on. Jean. Jean, aren't you even going to speak to me? Slap me even? How long can you look right through me, pretend you don't if know... If this stuff comes with a hotel, bright eyes, spread the word I'm not in the market. You stand there and take that, Mrs. Moore, when all you asked for was a slap? I've had all of it before. That was my husband. Stunning relationship you two have. Mm-hmm. But not for long, Mr. Wall. I've got this feeling not long at all. Her kitten. Yeah. Hey there. Are you on the boat? Are you talking to me? That's right. You mind if I come aboard? Not at all. You know a man named Haven? Who are you? Haven's not around, is he? Maybe I'll just look around. Out of that cabin, Buster. In fact, off the boat. Where is he? Where's Haven? Uh, just because it's a fine sunny afternoon and I don't want to louse it up, I'm going to tell you a thing. I saw Haven about six hours ago up the beach. That way, up the beach. I saw him there, I talked to him for a little while, and I left him. Now you can take off. Your name's Shannon? So? Yeah. So! Seeing you on your back, I suddenly feel real good. Bye, Shannon. Hey, hey, you. 
Yeah? Wait. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't give you the information you asked me for as soon as you asked me. And what? Well, I, I hope you don't mind my asking you, sir, but who are you? Yeah, you ought to know. My name's Moore. Gene Moore. I've got a wife staying at your hotel. Her name's Claudia Moore. Yes, sir. My wife, whose name is Claudia Moore, cashed in everything I owned and ran away with a man named Haven. They were going looking for an island with my dough. And you were helping them. So you slugged me, isn't that right, sir? That's right, Shannon. I see. <coughs> now, now we can be friends, Moore. I'll wait till you wake up, then we can be happy about it. Time's running thin, Shannon. Night all around us, and you still haven't come up with Tommy Haven. Now look, Buster, I'm as anxious to find him as you are. Nothing I enjoy more than playing audience to a show between a husband and a cat who ran off with a man's dough and his wife. I promise you I'll hiss. We're even up on bruises, Shannon. I slug you, you slug me. Sporting. But you still owe me Haven. All right. All right. So we'll ask around some more. Hey, sailor. I hear you calling, honey, and I'm coming to you. You seen Haven around? I got a husband here who's hungry for the man. I haven't had a Haven around here for hours. Maybe I can come up with someone else for you, Mr. Moore. What are you talking about? Not 20 minutes ago, a charming little fellow with gleamy teeth came up to me and asked for you. I sent him to your room. He gleamed so nice. That's what you did, huh? Come on, Shannon. Till I find Haven, I don't ever want you to let go of my hand. I told you I'm a sucker for domestic phrase. After you, husband. You know where the light switches are, Shannon. Come up with one. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed, sir. Light and... and something else, husband. Hey. Claudia. Claudia. Hey, she's been stabbed. Well, help her, help her. I wish I could. I really wish I could. Your wife's dead, Mr. Moore. Yeah? Well, does it surprise you, Shannon? Does it really surprise you? Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. In Shannon's place on Havana shore, his trial and tribulation in quantity galore. A husband be read and policeman with book To scribble note on lady whom life forsook The lady was a traveler, the lady was a wife Who roamed the Caribbean in search of new life With a man not hers, with a man not here To die by a knife is the price so dear You're a fortunate man, Inspector LaSalle You get background music with your murders for this, my gratitude, senorita. And you, Shannon. It's the talk of Havana. What makes your hotel so attractive to murderers? I just put up a new neon sign. Why point a finger at me, LaSalle, when you've got the lady's husband right here with things to reveal about his wife? That right, Mr. Moore? Claudia's dead. That's all the revelation that'll ever come to you, Shannon. You heard the song the boy sang. Claudia wanted a new life. She didn't make it. If I could, I'd weep. I want only Mrs. Moore's murderer. I give him to you. A little man with more than his quota of teeth. 
black hair, brown eyes. He came here and asked for Mr. Moore. I sent him to Mr. Moore's room. What Sailor's trying to tell you, LaSalle, is the little man with the knife and the teeth wanted Mr. Moore here dead. In the dark, he got mixed up. Hmm. Gracias for doing my shovel work. Perhaps now you will honor me with the murderer's name? Oh, well, ain't greedy, LaSalle. You can have that part because we don't know. Then I am no longer wanted here, and I am sensitive to such things. Adios, non-cooperatives. Why didn't you tell him, Slate? Why didn't you tell him about Mrs. Moore and Tommy Haven and the island? Because that belongs to Mr. Moore. Right, Mr. Moore? Yeah. And thanks for letting me keep it. The no dough, the no wife. Courtesy of you, Shannon? Well? Por favor, may I sit down, Senor Haven? Sure, sit down. Who do you think I'm waiting for? Gracias. Uh, you did what you were supposed to, Milo? I did, Senor. I went to this Shannon's place. I asked for Senor Moore's room. I was directed to it. I went to the room. I opened the door. There in the corner of the dark room, I saw a cigarette glow. I threw the knife. Here, this knife. Fool, put it away. Here, let me have it. You want Havana to know what? Give it to me. See, the knife, I threw it. Senor, it was a woman I killed. I said, Senor, it was... A... I heard you, Milo. You said it was a woman. It wasn't Jean Moore. It was Claudia. She must have been waiting for him in his room. Milo. Si, senor. A little walk, Milo. We've got to straighten this out. Don't we, Milo? Si, senor. Then let's do it. I want you to make a call for me. Anything, senor. Good. In here, Milo. This phone booth. Here's a nickel, Milo. Call a number. Si, senor. Uh, what number? Any number, Milo. The one you find on the end of your knife. <laughs> Bye, Milo. What's with LaSalle, Slate? The boy's got a murder on his hands. So he calls us up and invites us to a joint in the barrio. This is a very quirky policeman. I just had a flash. Why don't we walk right in here and ask the fella? Shrimp boats must be out again, Daddy, because there's no dancers here. Just that leftover guitar player on the bandstand, otherwise empty. Empty except for him, the guitarist. For me, the overworked official, and for you, the owners of murder hotels. And uh, you are not going to interrupt me? Interrupt? You crazy? We've been living for this moment. And I will do my utmost to make it thrilling for you both. A double file behind me, please, to the third phone booth from the left. This little man folded inside with the knife in his back. A little dead man familiar to you, Senorita Duval, huh? That's him. That's the man who came to... What man, sailor? The one who came to Shannon's place asking for Mr. Moore. The one with the gleamy teeth. He is a barrio by the name of Milo. You called him a murderer, Senorita Duval. Yeah, she did. But now we'll never know, will we? Unless you and the Senorita and Senor Moore wish to cooperate. Unless you cease to withhold from me evidence. You'll have us up to your pokey, huh? For years and years, maybe more. For being with tight mouths concerning the murder of a woman... Concerning the murder of this man, Milo. Concerning the... You're a real convincer, LaSalle. Let's go find more, huh, sailor? I can't stand it when policemen call me tight-mouthed. And that's the way it is, Moore. We've got a little threat from the police hanging over us. I thought I'd tell you because maybe you ought to give this up. Let LaSalle take care of it. A good suggestion is worth a good answer, Mr. Moore. What about it? You want a comment? Make it up for me. Start with this. I had a wife once named Claudia. I had a lot of dough once, too. 
So now there's not much of anything at all. I wish there was something we could say. Something we... Okay, Shannon. Okay, what? We've been playing long enough. What's your part in it? Are you kidding? You think so? I asked a question. Your part in it, kid. What's Haven paying you? How much of my money did he brush against you for these tears you're shedding for me? For the lies? You really aren't kidding, are you? We had each other off balance once, Shannon. And now here, you and me, even up. You want it that way, huh? Just like that. Take a walk, sailor. Both of you lost your mibs. What kind of a way is this? I said take a walk, sailor. Talk to me, Shannon. This way, buster. <laughs> I kill each other, fellas. <laughs> there. There's your boy, Moore. There's Haven. Wait your turn, Tommy. Wait till... I... This is what I've been trying to get done all day, people. Now it's done. Wish me well, because Gene Moore is dead. Grab this, Haven. Yeah! Try that again, Shannon. You'll lie down gently beside Gene. Let's get moving, folks. We've got sailing to do. <laughs> You look natty and salty up there at the wheel, Shannon. Just like a dream in the moonlight. Blow your brains out with that gun, Haven. It'll freeze the moment in your memory. I'll cry for you, Haven. I'll give you a nice, big, fat, round tear. You miss me, huh, doll? Ask me again. You miss me, huh? You're coaxing, Haven. I kind of like it. You know, it's really a shame. What is? Where I'm going, the island, the place neither of you will quite get to. It'll be lonely for you. You pitching something, Keto? You better watch her, Haven. She's been known to sell people out. Is it happening to you, Shannon? Let's hear the girl out, shall we? What's on your mind, sailor? Nobody's selling you out, Haven. You take me to an island, how am I going to cross you? True, true. Don't say I didn't warn you, Haven. Thanks, Shannon. Only shut up. We've got a nice conversation going. Sailor and me. Hi, Haven. Oh, tilt the face a little to the moonlight. I, I want to look again. Like this? On your feet, sailor. I'm still tilting. You'd better help me. Sure. Take my hand, baby. And mind the other one. It's still got a gun in it. Thanks. Now what? My good idea. Take the wheel away from Shannon. Go ahead. Go ahead. Man says I should take the wheel, Slate. I heard him. Take it. Live it up. Come here, Shannon. You take orders good. Jump off the boat, Shannon. Try that. Are you crazy? It's 30 miles to any place. I don't know where that is, even if I could swim 30 miles. Right off this side, Shannon. Jump. Or better yet, stand where you are. I'll push you off. Thanks. Hit the wheel, sailor. Let me go. Let me go. Let's both go. Is that you, Slade? Uh, 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 nice going, sailor. You all right? I'll get better. Now give me a hand. Haven? I've got a handful of hair. I think he's attached to it. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Well, let's go back to Havana, sailor. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, will return in just a moment. Is that you, Slade? Sharp, huh? Spiffy. That's a beach outfit, bathing trunks, a straw hat, and a blazer. Uh, yeah, well, I, I bought a ukulele, sailor. The instruction sheet said best results are obtained while wearing a collegiate outfit. 
A ukulele? Since when do you play a ukulele? I was taught. I was taught. By whom? By Myrtle W. <laughs> she who walked by Waikiki Shores. Now you know. So play something already. Why, what do you know? Go, go. Hey, sailor. Sailor, I didn't know you could hula. Why, sure I can. Know what these hand movements mean? Fishy on the sea, pink shell on the shore. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where does it say pink? This. This says pink. And you know what this says? Yeah, I know. Uh, is that what it said? Did it, sailor? You read me like a book. Likey Island Girl. <laughs> And so, our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture.